You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome back to the Anxiety Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the winter blues or seasonal affective disorder as it's also known or more formally known. Um, So yeah, we'll get on to kind of talking a bit about that in a second and my own experience with the winter blues or parts of it. But I've got something exciting to start with today. This is, uh, yeah, it's very exciting. So, you know, I've got sponsors who uh, sponsor the show from time to time. Well, I got uh, contacted by um, a listener uh, and he runs this really cool company that makes spices for barbecue. Um, His name is Kevin Habovic. And uh, basically they started kind of from a hobby turned into this business, which is, you know, backyard barbecue. uh, And they've turned it into a passion project, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So if you are at all interested in barbecue food or cooking food or eating meat, then let's please support this fantastic family-based business that's been started and uh, check out their products. So um, Kevin kindly sent me a little, the triple pack I got the trifecta of barbecue spice love, and um, I've been digging into it. So there's three different types. There's a barbecue rub, there's a fiesta blend, which you can use for tacos, and I just throw it on everything. I put it on eggs, I put it on chicken, beef, pork, whatever I got. There's one called Kicking Wing, which is uh, half empty already. I've only had it for a few weeks. Uh, Yeah, and that goes on chicken, beef, if I make a salad, I'll throw it on that. So it's absolutely outstanding, these different flavors. And uh, yeah, I would encourage you to to check them out. I've been using them a lot. And uh, I think it's just amazing that this family, uh, Kevin and his family, uh, Kevin Habovic, have made these homemade rubs. Uh, they've won loads of competitions with them. And so they decided to to share them with people so you can order them online. So if you go to... Habavik Backyard Barbecue. We will put the link in the show notes. But Habavik is spelled H A B O V I C K. Habavik. And then backyardbarbecue.com. Habavik Backyardbarbecue.com. There's a shop on there. You can see the different kinds of things they got available. They've also got t shirts and hats by the look of it. I might have to get one of those. Um, but anyway, that's uh, the sponsor of today's show, a longtime listener of the Anxiety Podcast uh, and a big fan of the show. And um, yeah, I think it's super cool to intersect these different worlds and support them as well. If you go to um, HabavicBackyardBarbecue.com and enter the um, code ANXIETY10, anxiety 10 the number 10 not the word 10 um you can get 10 percent off your order as well so very kind of kevin to to do that uh and again i'm a raven fan actually he sent me these spices to try out and i started trying them out and uh the other ones the other spices we've got have now been relegated to the back of the cupboard and my wife absolutely loves the the habovic selection as well so check it out see what you think let me know um but uh yeah use that link and uh the anxiety 10 habovic back by backyard barbecue and uh you know join join in with the cool kids get the good spices treat yourself you deserve it right seasonal affective disorder winter blues can you feel it um by the way in researching for this episode um i did check out a few different websites and uh i'll put the links to those in the show notes so you can kind of see where some of the content came from um yeah just for for sort of transparency reasons so if you don't know what seasonal affective disorder is, um, it's categorized by significant changes in your mood and behavior whenever the seasons change, um, with symptoms potentially last, last in four to five months. Um, and it can be summer months or winter months, which seems a bit strange because it's called the winter blues. I definitely experience it more from a winter point of view. Um uh, if you've got other stuff going on, so, you know, it talks about having a pre-existing mental illness or family history of depression can increase your chance of developing uh, seasonal affective disorder. 
Most common age group is 18 to 30. Teens and young adults are much more likely to be diagnosed with seasonal affective disorder than older adults. January and February are the months people struggle the most, which is now, which is why we're talking about it. Um, As well as the symptoms of depression, SAD can include the additional symptoms in the winter, such as overeating, craving carbs, oversleeping, withdrawing socially, or hibernating. Um, Yeah, summer symptoms can include insomnia, poor appetite, weight loss, anxiety, restlessness, or violent behavior. Interesting. Um, So... I don't know about the summer one because if the sun's shining outside, then uh, I'm generally happier. And I live in the Pacific Northwest, so I moved here because, well, one of the reasons I moved here is because the east is very, very cold. Um, Here it's not as cold, but it rains a lot, so it's much more like an English climate. Um, So, yeah, better in some ways, worse in others. And you often hear people who live in... Um, cold places where they're like, yeah, it's cold, but the sun's out and the sky's blue. And I kind of get that um, because, you know, I I think uh, sunshine does help even if you're inside a car. Um, I noticed when the summer, we had an amazing summer where I live and it was nice for months and months and months. And then all of a sudden, within a couple of days, it changed. Rain came, gray skies, it's over. And I definitely felt my mood drop a little bit after that. Um, So maybe you you can kind of uh you know understand the same thing i'm not sure if i've ever personally experienced full on seasonal affective disorder <clears throat> but the uh the sort of winter blues you know i would I, I would say i've i've had the winter blues um the sort of more casual definition of the term and uh i think yeah it's, you know for me it makes me think about um friends i have that live in warmer places be that Mexico or Panama or places like that. And I think I have a plan in my future, not necessarily when I retire, but in the future, I have a plan that um, I love Canada, but I don't like the winter as much. So it would be really cool if you could like enjoy the summer here. And then for winter months, you could be a snow. This is why people are snowbirds in, you know, in retirement, because you can go and get on the beach in the winter time or just go somewhere warm and sunny in the winter time and feel better. We know that we need vitamin D and we need light and sunlight and all that kind of stuff. So um, <clears throat> those are big things for our mental health and contribute in, in a massive way. So I think it's even my, my kind of takeaway from this is it's even more important in the winter months to make sure we're taking really good care of ourselves and to still go through the pain of doing exercise and and eating well, because it's going to be really important, you know, at a time when there is less sunlight and there is a bit more rain, potentially a bit more cold weather that we're taking care of ourselves. So, um, in terms of holistic treatments, I think make sure your vitamin D is on point. Um, still get out. I mean, I think that going outside for a walk, um, even without, oh, there's a bit of blue sky as I look out the window now. It's amazing. Um, but you can still get sunlight through clouds as well. So even getting outside and getting exposed to daylight, uh, going for that walk and taking, you know, where I live, taking advantage of when it's not raining to get outside and go for a walk, are still very important things you can do. Um, in addition to all the other things I think are important. So <clears throat> making sure you eat well, exercising um, and prioritizing those things, continuing to talk to people and being social, right? Phone your friends, check on them, speak to other people, get together in groups, get together indoors. Uh, it was my son's birthday. It's my son's birthday on Wednesday, but you know, on, on Saturday we had his birthday party and we went to this big indoor trampoline in place, which was amazing. And it was adults doing it as well. So there's lots of indoor activities to do. Um, I think it's just trying to prioritize those at this time of year are extremely important. So continue to work on exercise, work on your diet, speak to people, make sure you're getting enough vitamin D, um, get as much light exposure as you can, still go outside. If you have the resources and availability, then taking a trip, planning a trip to a warm climate in the winter, I think is a is a great idea. Um, going somewhere hot when it's cold where you are for a week or two is going to give you that massive boost. So that's something I'm thinking about for the future. 
Not this year. Uh, I do have a trip planned for March slash April. Not somewhere particularly warm. I'm, I'm going to be going to Japan. But uh, next year in the winter, I'm definitely going to try and plan in uh, a warm place to visit as well. So those are kind of the, the things to think about. I think it's just a case of um, all the things we normally talk about, but being even more conscious of them. So in the winter, we may be inclined to stay indoors and drink more alcohol. That's going to make you feel worse. Um, so you've got to prioritize exercise, healthy eating, get off the alcohol. After, if you've had some during the holidays, well done. Now it's time to, to focus and get back to those healthy habits. Take care of yourself. Be social. Um, I uh, Yeah, I, th- I think it's just kind of starting those conversations when you're out in the world. Uh, I went to the library on the weekend and as I was walking in, this lady was carrying in, trying to carry in her table and her little cart full of full of things. And I said, can I help you carry the table? She said, oh, thank you very much. And I got into a conversation with her um, and it turns out she's into nutrition and helping young mothers and just all sorts of really cool stuff. And that sort of, you know, 10 minute conversation came from just a like, you know, can I give you a hand with that? And there you go, made a new connection in the world whilst picking up my my book. So that's, uh, yeah, I always kind of feel very grateful for those types of opportunities, but I believe they're everywhere. Opportunities to start conversations, to help other people, uh, to meet new people in your community. And I think having people around you, if you don't live in a, a large family of people, is very, very important. So get out there, get to the gym, eat well, speak to people, get as much daylight as you can. Those are the things which I think are, are very important. And if you're suffering on a more extreme end, then I do think definitely uh, the therapy route, speak into somebody, find a therapist locally or find a therapist online, one of which is a sponsor of this show, BetterHelp. Um, speak to somebody about how you're feeling so that you're not isolated and on your own. I think getting help is is massively important. Go to your doctor, get checked out for everything, see if they find any deficiencies or anything they can help you with. Uh, get some talk therapy and make sure that you're taking care of yourself. All right. Um, if you haven't let, yet left a review for the podcast, please do so. Go to Spotify, go to Apple Podcasts, go to HabavixBackyardBarbecue.com and buy yourself, treat yourself to some kicking wing spices and rubs. You won't regret it, I promise. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.